So Yaakov Cronenberg is the author of this book, Jewish Astrology, A Cosmic Science. Now, those of you who listen to this year, listen, I am no expert at this. I just try to understand it from the little bit of Kabbalah that I know. So to try to be able to see this is really not so easy for me. But I want to point out that he said in the last two years, Shiorim, two very significant ideas that have to be thought about. And it's just introduction, because all of this may be very new. The first idea, first, the first idea that, that Rabbi Yaakov talked about was the topic of what kind of system of watching the movement of the, of the stars up above us, even though we live in cities now, and we don't live in places where we can really see the stars like that, but in ancient times, of course, everybody could see that. That was obviously everywhere where the stars were and how they moved. So there was two systems of understanding this. One system is called the sidereal system, which is today employed by the Indians, by the Hindus. And Hindu astrology is very big in the world. A lot of people know about it. But we use another system, which is called the tropical system. Now, before I read this here, I never heard of either one of these two. But he explains that the sidereal system has to, as a concept of the movement of stars one degree every 72 years. Now, what is he talking about? So he's saying that, that think about this. This is what it seems to me. That really what is up above us is also ball-shaped. And so that things are really rolling around inside of that ball how they're rolling, there's a billion different kinds of rolls going on here. Uh, but nonetheless, that the fixed planets, or the, excuse me, the constellations which make up, the 12 constellations that make up the zodiac, according to the sidereal system, they move one degree every 72 years. If you count over a thousand years, there are quite a few 72s in there. So it can move certain degrees. In other words, so after a while, after a few thousand years, you actually, what might have started in Aries is going to be in Taurus. That's according to that system. But the Jews use a different system called the tropical system. And in this system, the, the construct which we understand as Chachma, which is the origin of reality as far as we can perceive it, that that never changes. Where the change occurs is in the ball, which is called Bina. Now, this, these are some big ideas, ideas that, that uh, listen, this guy is very, very bright. And I think that the problem for people who are bright or have something special going on intellectually, they don't have a lot of people they can learn with because they know things or they see things that takes a long people a long time to try to learn what they're saying. Let's come back and see if we can see a little bit more. We have a few minutes. Here we go. It says, in another Zohar called Tikkunia Zohar, whoops, this went way, way off. And remember, I apologize in, in, ahead of time. The text here, uh, Rabbi Yaakov never had a lot of money. <laughs> so... He did the best he could to get it published. He found a guy that would publish it for him. And uh, it's like in a notebook form, or I don't know what you would call it. It's paperback at any rate. In another Zohar, there's a section of the Zohar called the Dikunia Zohar. He says this is also written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It goes further and takes a different approach and says that the first man, Adam, did in fact fall down to each of the seven lands. Okay, so that was the second thing that he brought up. It was the concept of the sevens. I didn't get, I, I forgot that. I got involved with the other one. It's the concept of the sevens that inside of the earth could be seen either as seven, seven steps going inwards. In other words, we're on the top step or one of the step, the outside step. And then we're going into the very fire at the, at the center of it. Now, I forgot this, the, the second one, one of the, of the, the other half of that. Let me just think about it one second. Okay, I got it. The other one has to do with seven climates, which is much easier for me to understand. I'm not sure that's which we use. In other words, that the climate in uh, Asia, for example, very different. That is in Western Asia. Then you go to Eastern Asia. They're going to have a completely different things. And people look different and people talk different. Then you go to Africa. Then you go to Europe. You go to the Western world where we live. 
So all of these are different. He says there are seven of them, seven different climates. So exactly how that works, I don't know, but that's part of a new idea. Now let's go back to what I was reading. And where are we here? He says another Zohar called the Gunia Zohar. He says it goes further and takes a different approach and says that the first man, Adam, and uh, uh, Adam, which is Adam and Eve, did in fact fall down to each of the seven lands. He fell down, down, down into the, each of the seven lands. And in each earth, he had seminal emissions. Now understand what he's saying. He's saying there's many earths. Well, because earth is malchus. And there's a malchus of malchus, and there's a malchus of kasser, and there's a malchus of chokma. All of these different aspects, and Adam Arishan was above that and fell into the, into the malchus of each one of them, where he had a nocturnal admission. In other words, he became Tommy there. And for each of these emissions, he formed and created together with a female demon called the. We will, you, I'm not going to pronounce this word if you word if you have the book or you're following with me. Uh, I think we call it Polonis. We don't even say her name. So he had, in other words, this is like if a person is knows a man knows what a nocturnal emission is. There's a very real spirit that comes into that. It's a, we call it a fantasy, but actually it's very it's very directed. And could brings about this nocturnal admission. Who is that spirit? That's this Polonis. All these different creatures which inhabit the lands below, because as Adam Arishon fell, he felt into the day in the greater illusion, and the world is greatly a, a great illusion. So everything down here is influenced by the four forces coming from up above. So what is the reason that man is at the highest level on earth? It's because just like God is above the heaven, man is at the, also at the top of his world. After the seven spheros is the throne of God, with the image of the man, and above all that is where God sits. Now understand these words. I'm going to say that again in my way that I can understand it. It's because just like God is above the heaven, man is also at the top of his world. Uh, he says, it, so he says, after the seven spheros, now which seven spheros are those? Well, starting from the bottom, it's Malchus. Starting from the top, it's Chesed. Chesed, Gevura, Teferis, Netzach, Hod, Yisod, and Malchus are seven spheros. The entrance is through Malchus, which is at the bottom. So he says, after the seven spheros is a, a concept called the Kisei Hashem, which is throne, a throne of God, which is refers to uh, a, a higher level of reality with the image of the man, and there's an image of a man on that, and above all that, there is where God sits. And is it above, so it is below. And just as the same it is in the higher world, it's the same thing in the lower world. And in this world, too, the human is like a king on the throne of all creatures on earth, Tevel. Now, we have a little bit more I can say. This this is like really fantastic stuff. Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, the Ramak, explains that Rav Hamnuna, who was a righteous man for the Zohar, so also I think that Rav Hamnuna is a spiritual man, is a, is a spirit. So he says, actually got punished because he didn't believe the Zohar's teachings of the seven layers and became shipwrecked and then fell down to the lower levels and saw all the different creatures and things, just like the Polonies. And when he came back, he repented for not believing in the Zohar's teachings on these creatures. And today, even the greatest rabbis find it hard to believe it. Sometimes things seem impossible to believe, to believe, and yet on a certain level, you should believe. In any case, one should remember that there are things which are beyond our ability to understand. But we still have to believe these things because we trust our sages and they tell us these things are there. This is Baruch Fleischman. This has been listening to Reb, Reb Yaakov Cronenberg here in some tremendously, for me, very appealing ideas, which I have not heard before.